Welcome back. This week we're in Southampton with a budget of £150,000. To buy our house hunter the home of her dreams. Jo Johnson wants a property with period charm, lots of space, that's quiet yet with easy access to the city centre. Yesterday we looked long and hard at three houses. Jo thought the first, in her favourite area, the New Forest, was a bit on the small side. Do I really want to be in the country that much to have a smaller house? Our second house had plenty of room but lacked the character features she craves. Currently, yeah, there's no fireplace other than... <laughs> we seem to be on the right track with number three. Wow, I like this place. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but she wasn't as keen on the size of the garden. You might think about some taking the whole thing down. down yeah. We've got two more properties to see. Our next house is just ten minutes from the city centre in the suburb of St Denis. Local estate agents enthusiastically describe this location as on the up, but property prices here are comparatively low. We've learnt that a big garden is important for Joe, so this property shouldn't disappoint. It's a late Victorian mid-terrace with an incredible 90-foot garden. And at just under £112,000, it's well within budget. This is the dining room. Oh my goodness! It's very red. It's very red. <laughs> now you might not want to have it this colour, no. because it's only got the one window, and I think it could be quite dark. Beneath the decor, it's easy to see that it has lots of space and beautiful period features. But for Jo, it needs some cosmetic attention. The walls and ceilings in this house are covered in this kind of textured wall covering. It's very tricky to get off. You can steam it and strip it off. You can sand it, which makes a hell of a lot of mess. Or if it's on the ceiling, you can simply take down the ceiling and replace it. But the easiest option is to get it skimmed by a professional plasterer. What do you think? I really like this house. It's got some really nice big rooms. Um, it's got lots of potential. It's not quite to my taste, but that will give me a chance to make it mine. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. This huge, huge house compared to you know others that have been a lot smaller for a lot more money. You said you wanted a decent garden, Joe. You got 90 foot of it here. Oh wow! Nice little spot to start with, but and then we go right the way back here. Oh. So an impressive house and a huge garden, all at a great price. What's the catch? The garden goes way back, goes beyond here, but... It backs onto a busy main road and... It's not only that road, Kirsty, there's a railway just here. Maybe that's why it's priced like it is. 112,000. I wouldn't mind having railway track at the end of my garden at all. Usually you get a longer garden as a result. If you look on maps, you often see where the railway track goes the houses on either side have particularly long gardens. Yeah. It depends. I think that's probably the main London line down there. Oh, come which on, might listen make it... to it. It's noisy. So, great house, huge garden, big drawback. We're heading back towards town and revisiting Shirley. This time, though, a quieter corner. Located in a cul-de-sac, we think our final property is a bit of a gem. It's detached, Victorian and packed with original features. And outside, things get even better with a stunning 48-foot cottage garden. Priced at £152,500, it's a real find. Oh, Joe, come and start in the garden. Oh, wow. Isn't it lovely? It's lovely, yeah. It is. It's a very cottagey garden. It's a very mature garden, just under 50 foot long. Is that big enough for you? This sort of layout with the mature sort of shrubs and, and plants, yeah, because it gives it that feel of, of being that bit bigger. It feels longer than yeah, that, doesn't it? Yeah, It's also very quiet. It is. Let's have a look inside. Well, what a result to be detached. I know. No nosy neighbours. It's a nice room, isn't it? Is, it is, yeah. Is this colour one that you would keep? Possibly not. It's a bit bright. <laughs> it's rather interesting because the <laughs> vendors of this house searched high and low for the right historical colours. And it seems that before the death of Prince Albert, the Victorians liked very bright colours before they went into the mourning period. And this is an authentic early Victorian colour. Oh, wow. But notwithstanding, it's not for me either. No, it makes the room a bit smaller. Like the rest of the house, the kitchen is full of character. It looks small, but it's deceptive. This is going to go, unless you can negotiate with a vendor. Yeah. That will probably go, that will go. That will go. So even the rat might go. Yes. 
So a lot of your storage space is essentially freestanding? Yes. Not necessarily a bad thing because the space shell gain could be better used. I think you need to go and get a specially designed kitchen. It doesn't need to be hugely expensive. I think you could have some really good wall units and, and just make intelligent use of the space. Mm. Upstairs, the house is equally impressive, with three good-sized bedrooms and, this will please Joe, views to the rear over open fields. Over to you, Joe. Does it score points? Yeah, I like it. I love the garden. The garden's really, really fantastic. Kitchen's a little bit on the small side, but I could live with it, I think, probably, because the dining room's a fairly big size mm -hmm. and um, you could sort of use a bit of that space, probably. The bedroom, the main bedroom's really nice because it's light and it's got a really nice fireplace mm -hmm. in it. Um, but yeah, I think it's really, really nice. Oh, I like great. The, there's a view at the back over some fields, yeah. which gives it lots of space, and that is a real seller for me. If it turned out to be the perfect house, would you stretch the full 152 and a half thousand? Possibly. We'll have to have a think about it. OK. Oh. <laughs> right, OK, let's go off. We've seen five very different properties. So which, if any, does Joe want to revisit? I really want to go back and see the one with the garage. I really right. liked that. But she'd prefer a longer garden. I'm also sort of toying with the idea of the one with the really long garden. Yeah. But is it going to be too noisy? And also the Victorian one. It's detached, but is it in the right place? Three. Three, yeah. Three. <laughs> well, at least we're starting to narrow the field. Joe likes all of these properties, but their surroundings need closer inspection. We begin our round of second viewings by revisiting the house with the long garden. It's on at £111,995. Joe likes the character of this house, but are the roads and railway just too close? We first brought Joe here on a quiet Sunday morning. It's now Monday, rush hour. Well, we're here for one reason only, aren't we? It's very loud. In fact, it's a lot louder than it was yesterday, isn't it? Is, isn't it? I don't think I'd like to sit and listen to this day in, day out, I have to say. It's not the busiest time either, hey! <laughs> oh dear! I think that's a no, I'm just on the ground of the noise. Not worth the money? Not so much not worth the money, just not worth sitting out in your garden listening to that, I think. So. Good decision. Great place, but it's wrong for Joe. Our next stop, the house with the garage. This is the largest and most expensive of our three, but it's packed with character features and needs no further improvement. Although at the top end of Joe's budget, we know there's flexibility in the asking price. So, it's the length of the garden that's the big issue here. <gasps> I know that this is your main concern about the house, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it takes a lot of space out of the garden. The, the garage itself is 22 foot long, mm. and there's another 10 foot of hard standing out here. We've had a quote here to remove this, and it's about £1,200. They reckon three skips, four days' work, and it's gone. But remember, a decent garage always adds value to a property. We reckon it's put £5,000 on the price of this place. Essentially, Jo would be paying to devalue her purchase. Hmm... It's a tricky one, I'm afraid, Ty, mm. because I know. I know the garden was important to you. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's not a horrible garden the way it is. I think it's just deciding whether it's it, the house is worth the, uh, the smaller garden. Do you think you'll be able to make that decision this afternoon? I hope so. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Come on. Cheers. Jo must act quickly if she wants this house. Other people are already booked to view this afternoon. Perhaps seeing the detached house again will help make up her mind. It's on at £152,500, which Joe would consider paying for the perfect property. It's been carefully maintained and stylishly updated so she won't have to fork out another penny. And the mature garden is a real selling point. And that is the most fantastically beautiful jasmine bush. Joe liked the playing fields behind the house, but will they stay that way? A phone call to Southampton City Council established the facts. As yet, the future of this plot of land is undecided. Developers are after it, locals are trying to keep it. It is the biggest open space in this part of town. Now, if Joe buys the house, she'll be taking a risk on this. 
My advice to her is that if that ever was turned into houses, guess where the access road will be? Now, if you're thinking of buying a house that's got open space around it, don't assume it'll stay that way. Check it out. Jo's got a lot to think about. Will she go for this one, the house with the garage, or a neither quite right? She seems to be warm into it. I don't think she'll buy it, though. No? I think that field is too much of an unknown. It's a detached house, though. It's got a lot of going for it, and it's the garden that she was really keen yeah, on. Yeah, it's a really nice garden. With such desirable properties, the pressure's on. We should get a move on. I think on. we should. Jo? Yep? Have you seen enough? Yep. Let's get a shift on. The question we're dying to know is, are any of them right for you? I really like the one with the garage. Good. I'm going to put nothing on that one. Good news. Excellent. Oh, wow. What we have to establish now is how much the property is worth and how much she's willing to pay. It's in great condition inside. And outside she has the option to create an even bigger garden. It's on at 159.950, but... The house is worth 150,000, mm -hmm. but 145 would be the right starting point. Sounds good to me. Hi. Yep, it, it's Kirsty from Location, Location, Location. Yes, we, we really did like it the second time round. And I was actually ringing you to make an offer. We put forward an offer of £145,000. Right, OK, well, I look forward to hearing from you. Brilliant. Thanks very much. <laughs> Bye. But as we made our bid, someone else was offering even more. It looked like Joe had missed the property. But the story doesn't end there. Two weeks later, that deal fell through, and Joe's final offer of 152000 was accepted. Absolutely fantastic house. It's got my fireplaces, it's got my garden, it's got a fantastic kitchen. I just can't wait to move in there.